Hey, this is Dustin from Roland Canada. I'm here with Long McQuaid at the Roland Inspiration Centre in Toronto. And I'm going to give you a closer look at the new TR8S Rhythm Performer. The TR8S is the newest addition to our IRA product line, and it is an 11 channel drum sequencer, uh, sound design powerhouse, um, sample playback machine, and I'm going to show you a little bit more about uh, the in depth. Uh, functions that you get on this machine. So you've got 11 channels and I can choose any sound on any channel. And the sounds that you get on board are a ton of our ACB engine sounds. So you get TR-808, TR-909, 707, 727, 606, plus a bunch of sample based drum sounds and a ton of samples, like over 100 samples you get on board when you pick this up. But you can also load in your own samples extremely easily just off an SD card and it's all stored in internal RAM, non-volatile RAM, so if you turn it off, turn it back on, all your samples are ready to go. So you don't need to uh, worry about loading times, anything like that. I'll just go through a couple of the kits that you get with this and then I'll show you how you can make your own sounds. So you get 808 kits, 909, 707, 727. And as I keep moving through, you'll find some that are obviously based on samples as well. Now, something that's really incredible about this machine is that all the controls for the sound design um, can be assigned to a control knob that's on the front panel, and each channel has its own control knob. So each channel has control for tune, decay, and the assignable control. So what does that mean for performance and sequencing? What that means is that you have at your hands, right out of the box, control over the tune of anything, so if I pitched everything up, just to prove a point here, everything's tuned up. So in terms of designing your sound, I can get my kick sounding exactly like I want with tune and with decay. Let's play with that hi-hat a little bit. So very easy to get your stuff kind of sounding the way you want right there. And this is all based on a preset drum machine that we have in here. We've got onboard effects, we've got a, a master delay, master reverb, and you can send any of your instruments to those effects at any amount that you want. But we've also got channel effects, and I'll show you a bit about that in a moment. So having everything on board right here is extremely valuable for getting the sound you want and actually reacting to the sounds as they're happening and creating something that is distinctly yours. Now, you've got volume faders for every single channel and the LED colors for these can be assigned different and saved for every kit. That means, say, you know, I want all my kick drums to be indicated as red. This is really helpful for live, but I want all my samples to be orange. So just by looking down, I can say, okay, I know that the sample I put in here is orange. I'm gonna go turn that up. I'm gonna go change the decay, whatever you want in that sense. So why don't we try building a kit and making something from scratch and we'll really see exactly how powerful this can be. So I'm just gonna go over to kit select here and move over to a blank kit. Now this should be just a simple 808 that I have set up here. Yeah. So starting from there, Right now I've got a 16 step sequence, but on the TR-8S you can actually chain up to eight variations of 16 steps per pattern. So that means I can actually get up to 128 steps per pattern, which was not available on any of our previous machines um, of the TR legacy. So if I wanted to start with say pattern A here, I can just step sequence in um, a kick drum. Let's try this. So. That's the kick drum pattern that, I, that I'd want right now. So what I can do now is decide what type of sound I want on my, uh, on my bass drum channel. So I'll just go over to Instrument Select, and I can start looking through any of the presets that are on here. So I've got a bunch of extended ACB engines. So what we've done is taken the core of, say, an 808 in this case, but we've added an extremely long decay. So you've got the ability to really push the sound, but it's still that 
true 808 engine. So it has that authentic sound, but you can really push and pull it to make it um, extremely unique. But also when you think about it, with that tune control, you can actually do things melodically and even on some sample based engines, you can control things chromatically, which we'll get into as well. So if I keep on going through, I'm gonna find my standard 909 engine. I'm gonna find 909 attack. So again, it's a bit of a modified 909. Keep going through, we'll find kicks that are based on samples like this one here. So if, I, if, I, if I'm gonna work with this kick, I can uh, start with that and then move on, pick a snare. So I'll go over to my snare track. I've already got a pattern on here. It's got the 808 snare. I'm just gonna go in and grab something else here. Cool. So I've grabbed another snare. And so I could, you know, pitch that down a bit if I want a different sound. I want it pitched up, there we go. So we can keep on moving in this, in this fashion with our hi-hats, with any of the other positions here on the machine, but they can be anything. So let's start with this. I'm going to leave the 808 hats because I like the way they sound, tune them up just the way I want them. So how about we try to use another channel to bring in a sample and then manipulate that and see what kind of things we can do. So I was mentioning that this control knob, one available on each channel, can be assigned to anything in that sounds engine. So if I'm going to use my low tom spot here, I'm going to go and pick a sound and I can audition it via the uh, velocity sensitive pad. Now you can play this in to the sequencer or you can play it live however you want. So as I'm scrolling through the sounds, I can actually be listening. So I'm gonna actually go and grab a sample that I've thrown in here, which is just a simple, simple chord sound. So now that that's on this channel, I can actually just go ahead and sequence it if I want. And then I have the ability to change the octave change the tune in any way, change the decay. So imagine I wanted to change that sound in a more drastic way. Well, we go into editing the instruments by holding shift, pressing edit, and now I can go through and see all of the different things I can do to a sample. So I can change the tune, I can change the decay time, I've already done that. I can change the sample rate so I can actually reverse it if I want. So I can have this sample be played backwards, which is a very cool um, effect and then I could even throw that onto the control knob. But what I want to do is change the sound a bit more drastically, add a bit of bit reduction, add a bit of digital noise to it, and then add a filter to it. So you can throw any of your samples through the onboard multi-mode filter. So I close down my cutoff, and then add my filter envelope, and it'll be a whole different sound. So now we've got a bit of a more noisy, resonant filter sound on there. And remember we can send this through any effects and all the effects can actually be customized so it's not just a standard reverb or a delay. So if I wanted to add some delay to this, I'm just gonna stay in my instrument edit menu and go to delay send. Now again, I could set, I could set uh, these knobs to control delay send if I want to. Right now I'm just gonna do it manually. And I've got that going through a tape delay uh, setting on the delay. So you hear a little bit of pitching, changing the wow and flutter of the tape delay. So again, a lot of cool sound design you can do with that. So right now, I've got quite a different sound than I had before. Now, if I wanted to, to automate that, say I wanted to automate the pitch of that, I could do it via the tune, but I can also set per kit whatever I want the control knobs to do. So let's say I want this to actually control the course tune. So I've just set this to now control the course tune. So I can actually sequence this in semitones, change it, and that's when this machine starts to get extremely powerful is the, is the um, motion recording. So say I wanted to put a couple different stabs from the sound that I've made. 
What I can do is hold down any of the position and lock it to a certain parameter here. So then you see I've got two different tunings going now. And I'll do one more on that third note. So now I've got a much more dynamic sound that was just based on that little chord that I put in. So if I go back to my original sound, or at least open the filter a bit, we can hear what's happening behind all the effects that we've done. So that's getting closer to, um, you know, a, more of a full kind of track idea. So again, much more than just a drum machine when you get into the actual sequencing. Um, so what we can do with that is also fill a little bit more of the spectrum up. Say I wanted to choose something to use as a bass for this. I'm just gonna go ahead and replace my mid tom here, which again, is just a standard 808 tom right now. I'm gonna go in and quickly do the same kind of thing that I did with this, but with a bass sound. So I'm gonna go in and find a bass drum that I will want to tune. Let's take a look here. So I'm just going through a bunch of the presets. Sustained 808 bass I've got here. I like that, so that's a SH-101 style bass. So now that this is on my mid tom here, I can start sequencing it. I'll turn up the gain a little bit of my bass sound. There we go. And then again, like we did with the other voice, I'm gonna go in and be able to change the semitone with the control knob. So now I've done that. So if we go back to recording. So now I've got this bass line tuned up. If I wanted to change that sound a little bit, I could go into the channel effects uh, for that bass sound and add some distortion or some compression. I'm gonna add a little bit of both. Let's see how that does. Nice. So all this motion recording can be entered like I've shown you on the step sequencer, but you can also do all of this live. All I need to do is press motion record on, and what I'll be able to do is, for example, change any of the parameters live, and you hear the hi-hats. I've just played that in and now that's in the sequencer, ready to go. So, you know, you can just keep on pushing this and pushing this and kind of getting more creative with sound design. But I've only done one bar now. So this is a really important part about this, uh, this machine is that even if I'm playing live, watch what I can do. I can copy what I've done on A over to B very easily while I'm playing. Just gonna hold down copy, press A, press B. I'm done. So now if I go to variation B, we hear we got the exact same thing. But check this out. So if you're playing live especially, this feature is very cool. We're gonna be listening to A, but we're gonna be editing B. So right now I'm listening to A. I'm gonna hold down record, press B. Now what we're seeing, I'm actually able to go in and edit B. So say I wanted to add some hand claps. a different hand clap pattern. And I press B. So 
So I, I added that in without hearing it and uh, no one else was hearing it either. So, you know, if you're looking to do variations quickly on the fly, excellent way to do it. So I can just keep on copying things over if I'd like. Copy A to C, that's done. Copy B to D. Now, if I hold these all down, I've got myself a um, four bar sequence and I can edit them all differently. So I'll edit D a little different. Add some extra snares at the end. And I'll change my little melodic chord there for every part. So now everything's gonna be a little different. of that as well. So on the fly, because I sequenced the, the course tuning with the control knob, I'm actually able to change the fine tune of, the, um, of my chord sound on the fly. So now I've still got that change, but it's two octaves down. So on top of all the effects that I've got in terms of reverb and delay send and each channel effect, I've also got master effects up top. So that you can save that per kit. All of these settings can be saved per kit and recalled. You can recall tempo per kit, um, all of your panel settings, or if you don't want, you can have it be live all the time. That's up to you as an artist. So the, ch the master effects range from some pretty cool DJ style effects such as DJ style filters, to effects like EQ boosts, all the way to buzzers. Then you get into phasers and flangers and things of the like. And you can punch those in and out as you like. And if you'd like, you can even motion record the master effects and all the effects up top. So that adds another level of creativity. Right next to the master effects, we've got the autofill feature. Now that's a feature that comes from the TR-808 tradition. That's the original 808. And what that is, is I can say, okay, every two bars, all the way up to every 32 bars, I can say, I want to inject a fill just to add a little bit of um, a little bit of variation on top of the variations I already have. So if I set this to four and I turn autofill on, what will happen is at the fourth bar, something is automatically gonna come in. So check this out. And I can program those fills however I'd like and I can even do the scatter control like that as well. So if I set it to scatter, and I'll set it to, uh, I'll, I'll turn the auto fill off, I can manually trigger a fill at any time. So I'm gonna say, instead of a fill, we're actually gonna be doing scatter. So check this out. Whenever I want, I can press the manual trigger button and it'll add a scatter effect. And finally, with the fill, you can actually use any of your sequences as an auto fill as well. So say if I go to E and I'll just make something up right now, I'll add a bunch of kick drums and four snares at the end. So this is what I just made. So if I wanted that to be a sequence, if I wanted that to be an autofill, I'm just gonna set E as my autofill. Now when I'm going back, I'm playing my initial beat here. Now when I throw in a fill, it's actually just gonna play E. You see, we've started from just a basic 808 kit, but we've already got a tuned bass line. It's distorted. We've got a, a chord that I imported and turned into a totally different sound, which we can still play with live. My sound here. Change the decay. Add some reverb. Go to my, uh, my reverb settings here. Get a little extreme with it.
So this gives you a lot more room to play with, especially when you're playing live and doing um, full tracks. You know, I could be starting with just something like this. And that's something that we've built, our little chord that's happening here. So as you can see, huge potential for sound design and laying down the fun fundamentals for a full tracks just with this machine. Now in terms of physical connectivity, um, we've got a lot of updated features. We've got a left, right, main out on the back, stereo out, we've got a headphone output, we've got six assignable quarter inch outputs. Now you can assign any of the instruments to go out of these mono, out of an individual output, or stereo out of a pair of outputs. Not only that, you can actually use any of these as a trigger sequencer. So we're talking an analog trigger sequencer um, using any of the voices on here. So if I've got a Eurorack setup, or I've got an SH-01, or I've got some old school analog gear that I wanna sync up and I wanna trigger, fire it off, all grooving with this machine, it'll send its shuffle and everything out, I can do that times six, plus we have a dedicated trigger output with its own sequencer. So interacting with analog gear is really easy and very deep with this. Like all of our other Ira products and our boutique line, the USB features USB audio, it features USB MIDI. So that USB audio is multi-channel. So if I plug this into a DAW, I've got every single channel coming out on its own channel, like a sound card. So this will show up like a sound card on your computer. It'll also take um, audio from your DAW and put it out of the master output so you can actually use this as your main output, main performance tool, and you can use it to control DAWs like Ableton as well as a control surface. Um, and also that features the IRA link, so if you were to connect this to a MX-1 or to a DJ-808, you could sync it up, you could also send audio and MIDI just over that USB cable. And here's the SD card slot on the back, and that's how we load up all of our samples. Again, the SD card, isn't playing, you're not playing the samples off the SD card directly, you're using it to load them into internal memory and it's playing from there, so you don't need to worry about loading times or latency whatsoever. Programming, it's very easy. Uh, getting hands-on with it is really fun. If you've ever touched a drum machine before, you're already good to go. If you haven't, it just takes a minute to learn, select an instrument, put in a sequence. And for those who wanna get hands-on, you can just put it into instant play mode. and you can record like that as well. So it's great for anybody to start getting into, or if you're big into sound design, uh, you can really start pushing create, uh, creative ideas pretty far with this right out of the box. Um, so I encourage you guys to check it out. Check out longwaquade.com, uh, go in store. It's shipping now, March 2018. Um, and thanks for uh, checking it out.